Well, you might've seen my video on testing the iOS development environment, setting that up and the speed for the iOS simulator, how quick it is on the new Apple M1 Silicon MacBook Air. Now it's time to do the Android side. So that's what we're doing today. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We're doing some testing of the new M1 Apple Max with the silicon chip. I guess it would be called Silicon Apple Max with the new M1. I don't know what to call it, M1 or silicon. I'm torn. Anyway, MacBook Air. I also got the Mac Mini in the mail yesterday. I'm gonna be pulling that out. We're testing the Air today to see how quickly it's gonna run Android Studio, how quickly the installation process will go. Not that really anybody cares about the installation process. You really only have to do that once, but still, we're gonna go through it. I'm not gonna make you sit through the whole process, but I'm gonna try to run it and see how quickly we can deploy to a device. I got my Android device right here. Now, the emulators don't work yet on the Apple M1 as of December 2020, but hopefully that'll work soon. So I'm gonna try deploying it to a device. And if you wanna see some performance tests like I've been doing here with Android Studio, anything related to that, I'm gonna do a build here and I can do a build on my MacBook Pro 2019 with 64 gigs of RAM Core i9. This MacBook Air that I'm about to do this on has only 16 gigs of RAM. So we can do that comparison as well. Let's kick things off. I'm gonna go to Google. Surprise, surprise. Android Studio. Does anybody remember URLs anymore? Or we just go to Google? I mean, I always just go to Google and I search for stuff. What would we do without Google? All right, Android Studio, download options. Let's do that. Download Android Studio for Mac. Yes, I read the licensing agreement. Make sure you read the licensing agreement. Download, okay. So that's gonna do some downloading and I earned a badge. What can I say? I tried really hard to earn this badge. I recognize all those folks that have worked so hard to earn the Android Studio user badge, and I'm sorry if I offended you. Show and Finder, my download finished, 920 megabytes. Let's double click that thing and install it. Drag it over to applications. Now, by the way, about Xcode, my last video, learned that that does actually run natively, as it should, I mean, it's an Apple product, right? So that does run natively, not in emulated uh, Intel through Rosetta. This one, I'm not so sure about. If anybody knows the answer to that, let me know down in the comments below, please. Android Studio, let's go ahead and open that up. There it is, open. Do not import anything, that's fine. Now, Android Studio has always been very slow for me. Opening the program, do some kind of compilation and Gradle compilation before I even get to look at my project or configure anything else. So hopefully this will resolve some of those issues. Welcome, next. Let's go with standard setup. Sure, that's fine. Finish, all right. So this is the part that's always annoyed me a little bit. I thought I already downloaded Android Studio, but now it's gonna be downloading all sorts of components. And this part takes a while. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll see you when this is done. A few moments later. So I'm not so surprised, but it says unable to install Intel Haxam. Clearly, you're not gonna be able to install that on an M1 chip. It's not an Intel chip, so you can't install Intel Haxam. For those of you that don't know, Haxam is going to be something that really dramatically improves the performance of your Android emulators by virtualizing the machine, basically creating a virtual machine that only works on Intel processors. Before we had Intel Haxam, Android emulators were the slowest thing you can ever imagine or wish for. It really drove me nuts. But after Haxam came out, I was happy and I was joyous and everybody celebrated and everything was good. Not having Haxam leads me to believe that things are not so good anymore. So I'm wondering what's gonna happen with Android development in general. I'm sure something's gonna be done about this to work on Intel chips, maybe some other kind of virtualization technology that's going to run on the M1 chip. But for now, we don't have Haxam. So let's continue on. Oh, by the way, it says, fortunately, your computer does not support hardware accelerated virtualization. Same reason that VMware Fusion and Parallels don't work for me here either. You can use a physical device for testing, which I'm gonna do, or you can develop on Windows OS X computer with an Intel processor, or you can develop on Linux. Let's continue. Let's create a new project. It's gonna be a basic activity project. Next, my application is fine. We'll use Kotlin and let's click finish. Okay, things seem to have settled down, or did they? 
Is something happening right now? Loading assistant content. This one is loading. Still a little bit slow. It's indexing right now. See, this is what I'm talking about. Ugh. I know we all have to deal with this, right? Because this is just the way things are. But come on, when are things really gonna change for the better for Android developers? Let's close this down. Okay, it's still doing the build, so I can't run it yet. And the things that I really am interested in here are things that show up under tools, I believe. And that only happens after the build is finished. All right, while that's happening, I'm gonna grab a cable. USB-C to USB-C. Android devices have USB-C already, so we're gonna utilize that. I'm gonna plug this thing in. Guess what, it's still building. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention though is I have not charged or plugged this MacBook Air once yet, and I've installed a ton of software in it already. I've tested out a bunch of things. I ran builds and the battery is not even in the red yet. <laughs> I don't know how many hours I put in on it yet, but it's really lasting a long time. My MacBook Pro would have been dead by now, a long time ago. Cradle Sync finished in two minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, something is still indexing though, but what I'm gonna do is just plug this in and see if I can run it. My Android device asked me if I should allow USB debugging. And of course I'm going to say allow USB debugging. There we go. By the way, your Android device has to be in developer mode and I have a video, I'll link to it up here uh, showing you how to set that up. We're ready. I'm gonna go ahead and play this Hello World application. So it looks like it did detect my device. Did it? Here we go. I'm gonna select my device up here. We are building. Hey, look at that. It finally popped up. There it is. Hello first fragment. And the app seems to be working just fine. So I'm not sure how long this should take normally, but there you saw it. That was real time performance from building an Android app, a Hello World app in Android Studio on the Apple M1 chip deployed to an Android device. Let me know down in the comments below if you do wanna see a performance comparison with my MacBook Pro so we can do some kind of timing there for the build process. And uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope you subscribe to the channel and give me a like if this was informative. If there are any more questions about the M1, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.